Hey guys, um, back again here uh, solving the questions on the back of chapter 2 of the Art of Electronics. Uh, and the two previous videos have uh, solved uh, question 1 and 2. And now we'll go ahead and uh, solve question number 3. Uh, this time we'll actually uh, build uh, the circuit on a breadboard uh, with the specified parameters uh, designed properly and test its performance and uh, see uh, if our design agrees with the requirements uh, given to us in question three. Uh, so to start the uh, design process, let's read uh, question number three. Uh, question number three says, uh, design a common emitter NPN amplifier with voltage gain of 15, VCC of plus 15 volts, and IC of 0 0.5 milliamps. Bias the collector at half of VCC and put the low frequency 3 dB point at 100 Hertz. So the requirement here is to design a common emitter amplifier and uh, we'll follow uh, the best practices of designing such an amplifier from chapter two of the art of electronics and, uh, and uh, once we design it, we'll test it accordingly. So let's go ahead and uh, start the design process. Okay, uh, so the design requirements and the actual uh, schematic of the design is uh, shown. Um, again, to recap, uh, VCC, we're told it's 15 volts. Uh, VC is half of uh, VCC, so that would be 7.5 volts with respect to ground. And the collector current at quiescent, when no signal is applied at the base of the transistor, is going to be 500 microamps, and the gain of the amplifier is to be 15 and also the cutoff, the low frequency cutoff of the transistor is also, we're told, to be 100 hertz. Um, so the circuit is um, a standard common emitter amplifier. Uh, for this task, I have selected a transistor from my junk bin. Uh, the transistor is 2N4401. The minimum beta of this transistor is uh, 100. And the VBE of this transistor, you can get the curve uh, from the data sheet. It's around 0 0.65, so I'm going to approximate it 0 0.7. <clears throat> and uh, the so what we have to do now is basically go ahead and design R1, R2 to bias the transistor at the required collector voltage. And also design RE. Uh, to uh, give us the correct IC, basically the collector current is determined by the emitter resistor. Okay, so the first thing that we'll do is, since uh, we're told that VC is going to be half of VCC, so VC is going to be 15 volt, uh, sorry, 7.5 volts, uh, and we also know IC, then our collector load resistor is fixed. So let's go ahead and solve that right now. So RC is going to be uh, 15 minus, which we're told this voltage is half of 15, so 7.5 volts. And divided by, we know the collector current we're given, and it's um, 500 microamps. Uh, this gives us, uh, this fixes our... Um, collector load resistor to 15 kilo ohms so uh, so we've designed RC now let's go ahead and design RE so there is few compromises that we uh, we have to follow when we're designing the value of RE because the emitter resistor is not uh, the emitter voltage is not specified so we could put it anywhere we want basically uh, um, and there is a few rule of thumb that we can follow to make sure the the, the biasing scheme is stable because it all depends <clears throat> on RE and also um, the linearity of the amplifier also greatly depends on uh, what RE is. So in order to fix that, so we'll have to make sure that the, um, uh, the VBE is um, uh, smaller than uh, VE and this is uh, to make sure that the stability of the amplifier with respect to temperature uh, can be maintained 
That is, if uh, VE is greater than VBE, then any deviations in terms of temperature on VBE uh, is going to be minimal because um, most of the voltage, uh, the base voltage will be dependent on VE, not VBE. So then with this respect, uh, I'm going to have to choose VE to be one volt. So if I choose VE, you can choose it in, in anywhere above 0.6 uh, or 0.7 in this case, uh, because VBE is 0.7. It's a good way of um, a biasing scheme. So usually, I choose VE to be around 1 volt. So if I choose VE to be 1 volt, then uh, RE is fixed. It's going to be 1 volt. And since uh, um, the collector current is almost the same as the emitter current, we'll have uh, 500 microamps here as well. So this will give us uh, 2 kilo ohms. So we have fixed our RE. Now, if normally um, the gain of uh, such an amplifier is given by a V equals uh, RC divided by RE plus the small uh, signal um, uh, resistance of the base emitter junction. Um, so let's put that on the shot. Sorry. So and since we want this to be 15 and we have already fixed our uh, resistors 15k divided by re being uh, 2k i'm going to neglect re small here uh, because i know it's going to be a lot smaller than um, re because re is um, uh, vt the thermal voltage divided by uh, ie so in this case it's going to be 26 millivolts divided by IE being close to 500 microamps. Uh, it's going to be a lot smaller than 2K so I'm going to ignore it in this case. So in here you can see that my gain is only 7.5 not really the 15 that we want. So in order to fix that what I'll do is I will divide this resistor which I've designed as 2K and include a bypass capacitor here to bypass it at AC basically some portion of RE to be bypassed so that we can gain our required uh, our required gain and we can easily determine that because we know the gain is 15 and we know RC is 15 so uh, so let's put that on the shot here uh, this is 15k this is RE, the one that we that's not going to be bypassed. So I'm going to call it R double prime E. This gives us uh, RE double prime is, um, as you can see, one K. So the one that we don't need to bypass, you know, which is this part of the resistor, this part of RE is going to be around one K. So if we satisfy that, then the gain will be uh, where we want it. So um, we have designed our amplifier accordingly, at least the DC aspect of it. And also we're told this needs to be uh, isolated with a capacitor because this is going to be a DC voltage and we don't want the our source, which will have RS. We need to put a coupling capacitor here and also a coupling capacitor here for the output. CC as well here and this one is going to be CE so we need to design RS CE and CC also for the uh, low frequency cutoff uh, point of 100 Hertz so let's go ahead and do that now uh, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here uh, before we design uh, the coupling capacitor values uh, let's go ahead we still haven't selected R1 and R2 to bias our transistor correctly so let's go ahead and do that right now let's design R1 and R2 uh, we already said that RE is going to be 1 volt, so I'm going to design this uh, base uh, voltage to be 1.7, which because VBE is uh, 0 0.7, so this point is going to be 1.7. Uh, and also, we have two conditions now in order to design R1 and R2. The first condition is, the. in this case, I'm going to ignore the base current to, just to 
to kind of give me a ballpark of the voltage here so I'm going to ignore the base current so if I ignore the base current R1 and R2 are going to be uh, uh, a voltage divider so the first equation that we need to satisfy is going to be R2 divided by R1 plus R2 ma is equal to uh, it's going to be 1.7 divided by 15 right because it's a voltage divider so that's what we have the first condition the other condition is in order to ignore in order to assume this case well we can ignore the base current we have to make sure that looking the input impedance looking into this node here uh, the um, input impedance should be 10 times the parallel combination of these two resistors which is going to be RB so the base resistance looking into here looking into here like this should be a lot smaller than looking into the base, uh, the, the base um, uh, input impedance so the other condition is going to be R1 let's put that on the shot R1 parallel R2 should be much less than the uh, resistance looking into the base which is going to be beta plus one multiplied by re and i'm going to approximate here to beta so it's going to be beta uh, multiplied by re which we have designed re already so and if you take beta of 100 then the this is going to be 100 multiplied by the 2k that we designed so it's going to be this is 200k Now, uh, and here is the design, um, um, the design choice that you can make. Uh, since R1 parallel R2 is much less than 200K, you can choose uh, the um, parallel combination of R1 and R2 uh, to be 10 times less than 200K. But for me, so that I can uh, ignore the base current sufficiently, I'm going to take it as uh, 50 times less. So you could do anywhere from 10 to anywhere greater than 10. Uh, if you do that, then you, your input impedance looking into the base of the transistor is going to be much larger than the parallel combination of R1 and R2. So in my case, I'm going to take it as 50 times less. So in this case, uh, we have two conditions that we can solve. So I'm going to head and set that up now. So now if you solve the two uh, uh, equations with two unknowns you're going to get uh, something like uh, 35k and 4.5k for r2 and for r1 being 35k so now you're going to go ahead and choose from standard resistor values um, something that is close to this uh, so i chose uh, since uh, the ratio of uh, r1 uh, to r2 is something like uh, 35 over 4.5k Uh, yeah, so the ratio being uh, 7.78, uh, you can get a resistor value that is less than uh, this uh, value, basically. Um, I've gone ahead and chosen uh, 27K and 3.3K, which has a ratio of 8.2. So you can you can play around if, if you want with parallel and series uh, resistance combination to get the exact one, but... It's not necessary to get the exact because you already have taken a, uh, uh, such a huge factor um, when you're designing these two that uh, you can get something approximate to this. So I've gotten, I've gone ahead with 27k and 3.3k, which gives me a ratio of 8.2. So now my my uh, complete circuit with biasing resistors is going to look like. So uh, my complete uh, uh, design is uh, 27K here, 3.3K here, um, and I've split the 2K uh, resistor into two parts, like I said. So I've gone with a 20 and 1.2K, 
and 15k here so our gain will be um in the uh, the ac gain will be uh, 15 divided by the unbypassed part of this resistor which is the a20 which gives us uh around 17 so the gain will be around 17 so which is higher than that 15 that we're required so this is the complete uh, dc biasing scheme so now we can go ahead and design uh, C1, C2, and uh, CE. So for this case, I'm going to choose a, a termination load here. And I'm going to go 10 times as big as this. So I'm going to call this 150K. Assuming my load is negligible compared to this, which is 10 times that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and design C1, C2, and CE. So if we start with C1, for example. And uh, since I'm going to be injecting my, um, to test my amplifier with... Uh, my function generator my function generator has um, an output resistance of or an output impedance of 50 ohms so i'm going to also take that into account when i'm doing my calculation here so for c1 the design goals are basically looking into c1 where c1 is the input impedance looking into where the c1 will be should be um, basically at 100 hertz should look a lot smaller than the the input impedance that is going to be uh, in parallel with C1. So if we go ahead and do that, uh, for C1, it's going to look like, uh, this is C1. It's going to look into the 50 ohms of our uh, source to ground. And these two parallel combination to ground. So 27K in parallel with... 3.3k uh, and uh, this is attached to the base emitter junction so uh, this is RE small RE of the base emitter junction uh, the unbypassed A20 because it's going to be bypassed we're going to ignore it so the unbypassed part is A20 to ground through CC we're going to make sure that we'll design CC to be short so this part is on bypass part, so that would be ground. This would be 820. And also, um, basically, uh, the dependent source coming here, like this. This dependent source here, the current source, if we look at the transistor model, basically it's going to look at the, the collector is going to look like um, a dependent source. So it's going to be um, alpha times IE which IE is this current here, and the current basically here, which is this guy here, which is IE. And multiplied by uh, basically the load combination of so this and this, but I, this is 10 times that, so we can ignore this guy. This would be 15K. So basically what you have to do is looking into this, looking into where C1 is, what is the, um, uh, basically what is the, um, Thevenin resistance looking or the Thevenin impedance looking into this node here. What is a combination of all of this? For this case, I'm going to ignore this since this has a high, the current source here has a high output impedance, so I'm going to ignore this. So, and I'm just going to include this for calculation for calculating C1. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, uh, the actual uh, R Thevenin looking into Yeah, looking into where C1 is, uh, basically going to be a combination of all those resistors around C1, and it's going to be uh, around uh, 722 ohms. So what we have to do is, for uh, looking into uh, the, uh, what I meant was, uh, the impedance of C1 at 100 hertz should be a lot smaller than uh, 722 ohms. Uh, that way we'll make sure that the coupling capacitor C1 is short for all the signals that are inter that we are interested in above 100 hertz so um, yeah, basically the equation becomes to guarantee that is um, xc the ac resistance of at 100 uh, hertz should be much less than uh, the um, uh, 722 ohms and xc is 1 over uh, omega c which is uh, omega c1 much less than 722 and this is over 2 pi fc1 should be much less than 722 ohms. 
So now let's go ahead and uh, design for C1 because we know F is um, F is um, 100 hertz, and this boils down to one over two pi uh, times 100 times C1 should be. I'm gonna take 10, 10 times less because we want it to be much less than. So I'm gonna to say 72.2 ohms. So and let's go ahead and design C1. Okay, as you can see, um, the calculation is uh, C1 is uh, about 22 microfarads. So uh, if we look into the circuit back again, C1 becomes uh, 22 microfarads. So we're going to guarantee that C1 is short for anything above 100 hertz. Uh, and it won't, be, uh, it won't play any part in uh, attenuating any of the signal into the base. Uh, so now let's go ahead and uh, do the same thing for C2. For C2, it's basically going to be the the combination of the 15k and 150k, and uh, and get uh, the uh, we'll get the answer for C2 as well. So if I do that again, we'll get. Okay, so for C2, we're looking at uh, again uh, the the series combination of the 15k and 150k, which is we assume to be our load. Uh, so if we do similar calculations, you can see that uh, we get uh, for C2 equals 100 microfarads. Anything above 100 microfarads will ensure that C2, uh, if we go back to the circuit, C2 will look short um, to the signals which uh, won't attenuate uh, coupling our signal, our amplified signal to the load, which is the 150k. Okay, now let's calculate uh, for C, uh, CE. So we'll do similar calculation for CE and uh, we'll give you a value. Okay, so now for CE, uh, the uh, equivalent circuit is going to be the 8.2 resistor. Uh, and looking into here, which is a 27K plus 3.3K, uh, sorry, the 27K and the 3.3K in parallel divided by beta plus one and also the 50 ohms uh, divided by beta plus one. So, and also this 1.2K. So if we draw that out, so it's going to look like this. I forgot here, this should be beta plus one. Uh, so you can see CE going through the unbypassed A20 resistor, uh, RE, which is the 52 ohms in this case, and the par parallel combination of the bias ring resistors divided by beta plus one and 50 ohms beta plus one, and also on the other side, the 1.2K. So if we do this, uh, the R Thevenin, looking into the circuit from here, is equal to, okay, so now the design for CE is shown there. So the R Thevenin is 2.1 kilo ohms, and now CE should be much greater than the, uh, comb uh, the um, all the combination of those resistance at 100 hertz, it should be a lot smaller than that. And uh, basically, which uh, entails um, that CE should be much greater than uh, 1 over 2 pi times 100 times 2.1K. And from that, we get uh, CE approximately around 10 microfarads. So if we make sure that uh, CE is 10 microfarads, then we're going to guarantee that the 1.2k will be short for any signal above 100 hertz uh, which basically uh, guarantees our gain to be above 15 for any signal that's above 100 hertz so now let's build the circuit and measure the bias voltages at the base and uh, let me just put this here so easier to explain okay sorry about that but anyway so we'll do the bias measurements here so we expect here to be around 1.7 volts. Here we expect to be uh, 7.5 volts. And uh, and basically that's it. And then also we'll inject a signal uh, above 100 hertz here and calculate the gain of the circuit. Um, and uh, we'll see if we've succeeded designing the required uh, amplifier in, in, the, in the book. Okay, let's go. Okay guys, uh, the circuit is built, uh, so let's go ahead and do the bias measurements and uh, see if we succeeded biasing the transistor uh, correctly in the active region and, um, and see if we have um, fulfilled the requirement that was set at the beginning of the design. 
uh, I made the, the small calculation error for C2. I said uh, it should be 100 microfarads on this um, on this here, as you can see. Uh, C2 says it used to be 100 microfarad, but I made a mistake. Uh, it should be 100 nanofarads. Uh, 100 microfarad is quite large, actually, for the uh, uh, equivalent resistance shown there. So C2 should be 100 nanofarads. But uh, um, in this case, I'm actually uh, using uh, a 1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. So uh, as I said, it should be anything larger than uh, 100 nanofarads should do for 100 hertz of uh, 3 dB cutoff point. And also for CE, we designed to be around 10 microfarads, but um, I couldn't locate one, so I'm using 22 microfarads, uh, also fine, because we, all, we want it to be greater than 10 microfarads. And same thing for C1, uh, I think we designed for 22 microfarads, but uh, I didn't have another 22, so I'm going for 47 microfarads, which is also fine as long as it's higher than 22 microfarads. So now, what do we expect? We expect the base voltage to be uh, around 1.7 volts, the collector voltage to be halfway between VCC and ground, which is 7.5 volts, and uh, and uh, we'll inject signals here and find out what our gain is. So first of all, let's do the bias uh, measurements. Uh, before we do that, let's take a look how I built the circuit. So the circuit is here. Uh, there's a transistor here, let's see if I can focus. Okay, that's the best I can do. So this is the transistor, the 2N4401. Uh, NPN transistor. These are the base resistors, the 27K and the 3.3K resistors. Uh, this is the uh, bypassed 1.2K resistor. This is the A20 unbypassed that determines our gain. And uh, the 15K from VCC to ground, uh, sorry, from VCC to the collector of the transistor is here. This is the CE, um, the emitter bypass capacitor and uh, coupling capacitor on the input and coupling capacitor on the output which is a ceramic one microfarad capacitor. Uh, this is decoupling for the uh, board to make sure that our supply voltage doesn't uh, fluctuate during the test and also as you can see there is the 150k uh, load resistor uh, attached to the uh, output coupling capacitor here. Uh, so now the base is here so if we see, first of all, let's see the supply voltage. Supply voltage is 15 volts, and I'm measuring it with my DMM. It's 15 volts, as you can see, and it comes here and gets measured here. So now if I do the measurement for VB, so let's take a look here. I'll use this meter for that. So VB is right here, the base voltage. So if we touch VB, what do we get? So I'm just going to touch VB. So as you can see, VB is uh, 1.6 volts. We designed for 1.7, but uh, the VB of a transistor is between 0.6 and 0.7, so uh, we can approximate it, so that's fine, 1.6 volts, as you can see. And also now let's move on to the collector. The collector is found here. Let's measure that here. We designed for 7.5, as seen there. And what do we get? Uh, we get very close, 7.57, I would say. So that's halfway between VCC, that's good. And uh, that's basically, those are the two important measurements we can make. And uh, let's go ahead now and inject a signal on the input from my function generator over there. So I'm gonna inject a frequency of one kilohertz at an amplitude of uh, 50 millivolts into the base and if it's 50 millivolts and we have designed our gain correctly remember our gain for this case it's going to be the um, if we go back to the circuit here it's going to be 15 divided by 820 or including the emitter de degeneration resistor so it's going to be 15 divided by 820 plus the small uh, base emitter resistance which is uh, 52 ohms so if we do that so let's just punch this in really quick so 15 K K divided by A20, the unbypassed uh, emitter resistor, plus the small RE, which is 52, we get around 17.2. Uh, 
17 points of gain so let's see if we get something close to this all right let me set up injecting my uh, signal and i'll come back okay i'm back uh, injecting a signal now as you can see the uh, signal generator is hooked up through this cable here as you can see that's where I'm injecting the base is here through the coupling capacitor into the transistor so now let's see this is at 1 kilohertz uh, let's say 1 kilohertz is our mid-band frequency so at 1 kilohertz as you can see the gain is the gain is uh, gonna be channel 2 is the output which I'm probing here Channel 2 I'm probing here. Uh, okay, so let's see if we can focus here. Okay, good. Channel 2 I'm probing here. And channel 1 I'm probing right here. So as you can see, I'm injecting 50 millivolts at 1 kilohertz. And I'm getting on the output here, uh, F equals 1 kilohertz. And I'll show you in a moment. And the output is V out is going to be uh, measuring 820 millivolts. This is peak to peak, and the input is also peak to peak. So our gain AV is 820 divided by 50, which comes around 15.7. So we've satisfied our uh, our gain requirement as well. Um, if our calculations showed uh, around 17.2 but you have to remember that uh, some of the tolerances in the resistors is not going to be right so but as you can see that we have made sure we are above the uh, set gain of uh, what we were told at the beginning of the design phase so if we go back here take a look here channel 1 is the input it's around 52 millivolts and channel 2 is uh, the output which is around 820 millivolts as you can see and uh, we can also f now take a look at the low frequency uh, cutoff point of this amplifier so if the gain of the amplifier the midband gain is 20 milli millivolts 20 millivolts uh, the peak I mean so now to find the low cutoff frequency point we divide it by the minus 3 dB point which is going to be in terms of amplitude root 2 so we're going to lower the, the 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 frequency until we get again uh, an output of uh, 5 7 um, yeah 580 uh, millivolts and that will tell us the frequency at which the cutoff low frequency cutoff is so what I'll do is I'll go here into my frequency and I'm going to lower this frequency until I get uh, the amplitude here the amplitude shown here to be um, which I calculated to be 580 millivolts so that will tell me the cutoff, the low frequency cutoff of the amplifier okay so now, sorry, let's get, go ahead and do that so basically what I'm doing is I'm decreasing the low frequency so you can see the gain still remains the same, so just take a look at the frequency. So what I'll do is I'll decrease. Let's go. 